Okay, here's a video for probability of compound events. Uh, first, I want to just give you an opportunity to write down the definition. So if you'll pause your screen, you can write down the definition of each independent and dependent events. Okay, uh, independent events are not affected by other events. So what we're talking about is the probability of something happening does not then be affected by some other circumstances. So the example that I gave was flipping a coin three times. So the probability of getting tails each time you flip the coin is not affected by the previous flip because when you flip heads or tails, it doesn't eliminate one of the options from your possible outcomes. So because none of your possible options ever get eliminated, we say that they are independent events because they are not affected by previous trials of anything. That then is in contrast to dependent events, and I'm going to start with the example that I gave, pulling three shirts out of a drawer of ten. So if you're looking for the probability that you'll pull three white shirts in a row out of this drawer of ten, you are affected by what you pull out the first draw, the second draw, the third draw, because the number of total white shirts that are in that drawer, say it's five, if you pull out a white shirt on the first draw, you only have four more waiting for you to go back and pick out of random. So because the number of options does reduce after each trial of pulling a shirt out of the drawer, we say that it affects the outcomes down the road, so that makes the events dependent. Okay, so now we're going to skip down to this example with uh, rolling a die and flipping a coin. I went ahead and filled in this chart for um, the, the sample space for rolling a die and flipping a coin. And so you could get a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6 on the die, and you could get heads or tails on the coin. So here's all the possible outcomes that could happen. So I got that filled in for you. Feel free to pause it and fill that in if you'd like. Now we're just going to kind of work through this example. How many total outcomes are there? Well, there are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 total outcomes possible. Um, how many outcomes are there for tossing a coin? There, I'm sorry, I, let me back up. I did total outcomes. Let me try that one more time. So for rolling a die, there are 6 because you can roll a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or a 6. Uh, for tossing a coin, there's heads or tails, so there's two options for that. How many outcomes are there in the sample space total? That's what I did the first time, and that was 12. Well, right away, there is hope that you would see a relationship between the 6, the 2, and the 12. What is it? The product of 6 and 2, 6 times 2, is 12. So is there another way to decide how many outcomes? Yeah, you can find the product of the number of outcomes in each category. Find the product of the outcomes in each category. Okay, so we're going to see if this works in another situation. So if you'll go ahead and try to fill out your chart according to this information here, I'm going to put mine on here and we'll compare and make sure we both got the same sample space. I decided to have a little fun with it, so I came up with specific sides, so chips, fruit, and salad, and specific types of sandwiches, ham, turkey, roast beef, bacon, or cheese. So then I filled out my sample space with one sandwich and one side, um, and this is what I've got here. So with one, two, three, four, five different sandwiches and one, two, three different sides, that gave me a total sample space of 15 different combinations of a sandwich and a side. So if our theory holds true, that means 15 should have been five sandwiches times three side options, and that indeed is correct. So we can use the number of options in each category to then multiply by the number of options in other categories to get the total number of options outcomes. Okay, now that we've talked about independent events a little bit and, and kind of the count, the way that we can kind of efficiently count to find out total number of outcomes, we then want to start talking about probability. Now, probability in its very basic form is part over total. 
the number of options that you want divided by the total number of options, part over total, that ratio, that fraction, that makes probability. Remember, probability, the maximum chance of something happened, the ma maximum probability is 100% or 1, and the minimum probability would be 0% or 0. So I've got some information here if you want to pause your screen, fill in your, your chart again, and write down our definition and um, notation for probability of an independent event. Okay, now that you've done that, let's fill out the table together. All right, so what's the probability of rolling a 3? So out of the 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 total options, there are 1, 2 of our 12 that have a 3. So that will be 2 out of 12, and if you reduce that fraction, 1 out of 6. So what's the probability? 1 out of 6. Now you can leave it as a fraction. You can turn it into a decimal if you'd like. I'm going to leave them as fractions just for time purposes. Okay, how about the probability of tails? Well, there are six options in our total outcomes that have tails in them. So that would be six out of the total 12 or one half. So what's the probability you have an outcome with tails? One half. What's the probability of rolling a three and getting tails? So that means these two things have to happen at the same time. Well, there's the one situation where I get tails and a three. So that's the one out of the total 12 scenarios that are possible. All right, rolling an even. Okay, so even numbers on a die would be two, four, or six. So here's two for the two, two for the four, two for the six. So that would be six out of the 12 total possible, which would be one half. How about the probability of getting heads? Well, that's these top six here. So that would be six out of 12 or one half. Notice I'm reducing every single one of these fractions. Probability of rolling an even and getting, tossing a coin and getting heads on that coin. Those two things have to happen at the same time. So heads with a two, heads with a four, heads with a six. That's three out of the total 12 options or one fourth. All right, and then they ask us this question. What do we notice about three and six? And that's where we had to talk about things happening at the same time. And so the number of options shrunk down. And so again, they're very specific that we had only a few options for those. Again, those two things had to happen at the same time. Those would be um, kind of like the intersection from our previous section. Now I want to put this efficient way of counting and probability concept together. So if we have multiple events, and here we're talking about two independent events, how can we quickly find the probabilities of that happening? Well, you would find the product of the two independent events. And so what we'll do is take the probability of event one times the probability of event two. Again, they're independent, so the outcome of the first event does not affect the outcome of the second event. Therefore, the probabilities are not affected. All right, let's do an example real quick. So at Millbrook High School, 30% of the students have a part-time job. 25% of the students are on the honor roll. What is the probability that a student chosen at random has a part-time job and is on the honor roll? So the probability of a part-time job and honor roll. All right, well, so that what I need to do is I need to then multiply the two probabilities. So 30% or 0.3 times... 25% or 0.25. Another way of thinking about this would be three-tenths of the, of the population and then 25% of the population. So what's the probability that you pick a person at random that fits into both of those categories? You're talking to multiply here. So 0.3 times 0.25 would be 0 0.075. Or if you're rounding to nearest tenth, 0.8, sorry, 0 0.08, or 8% if you convert to a percentage. Together, using this chart here for plans after high school, and it looks like they interviewed 164 total people from Sanderson High School about this. Okay, so what is the probability that a student chosen at random from the 12th grade class is female? 
So the way that we need to look at this is that we need to identify the total number of females that were interviewed was 80. So that's going to be our top number. That's, that's the favorable outcome. That's what we're looking for. And then the total number of people that were interviewed, 164. So 80 out of the 164, reduce that as much as you can. And that'll, or just turn that into a decimal, 20 over 41 or 0.49 or 49%. All three of these answers are acceptable. Okay, so now let's try to keep it moving here. What is the probability that the student is going to university? All right, so the number of kids that are going to university are 71 total out of the 164 that were interviewed. So that's not going to reduce, but I can type that into my calculator and get 0.43 or 40 3% of the students that were interviewed are going to a university. All right. Now, suppose two are chosen at random. So these are multiple um, events happening at the same time that we want to make sure that we're paying attention to. Okay, so now choose two people both randomly. Chose one student from the 12th grade. Assume that it's possible for them to choose the same student after they randomly choose the second person. All right, so what's the probability that the first person chooses a student that is female and the second person chooses a student who is going to the university? So we want to find the two probabilities separate and then multiply them together. So female, we already figured out, was 80 out of 164 or 0.49. That's our probability for female. And then second person chooses a student going to a university, we figured out was 0.43. So now we just need to multiply those together. So 0.49 times 0.43, that is 0.21 or 21% that we picked two random people. And the first person we picked was female, and the second person we picked at random was going to a university. So again, notice that we found the individual probabilities and multiplied them together. All right talking about um, dependent events and probabilities with those. So one of the things to point out is that we can't necessarily use the same multiplication rule um, with dependent events because the um, events are affecting each other's outcomes. Therefore, the probabilities change. Let's try example two here. We want to pull um, three marbles out of this bag five of which are red, five of which are purple. We want to go purple, purple, red consecutively. 